Internal Revenue Service IRS tax news. Dirty dozen. IRS urges anyone having trouble paying their taxes to avoid anyone claiming they can settle tax debt for pennies on the dollar, known as OIC or offer and compromise mills. I've never understood that term pennies on the dollar as if it's a bad thing. I mean, if someone owes me $100 and they give me the dollars along with some pennies on top of the dollars, I'm okay with that. The pennies aren't worth much, but maybe they're being used as like a paperweight so the dollars don't blow away. And what's with this Dirty Dozen tax scammer gang? Instead of scaring us about the Dirty Dozen gang, if the IRS did their job, they could cut the Dirty Dozen gang down. Honestly, even taking out just a couple of them would turn the Dirty Dozen into a terrified 10, turning the tables on the Dirty Dozen. And from there, it would be even easier to make them into a sackless seven, followed by a feckless four, and finally just a whiny one. Whining, because one is the loneliest number. Okay, here we go. IR 2022-119, June 7, 2022, Washington. As the sixth item on the 2022 quote dirty dozen end quote scams warning list, the Internal Revenue Service today cautioned taxpayers with pending tax bills to contact the IRS directly and not go to unscrupulous tax companies that use local advertising and falsely claiming they can resolve unpaid taxes for pennies on the dollar. So you might see advertisements that say, if your tax bill is over a certain threshold, say $10,000 or something, come to us. And they're at least alluding to the ability to lower the tax bill and they're at least alluding to to do that usually the offer and compromise although there might be other techniques that could lower the tax bill in some cases as well the offer and compromise is a real thing but the problem is one of the problems with these what they're calling the mills the oic mills are that uh, oftentimes they're targeting people that are vulnerable people because if you have a very large tax bill you're feeling kind of vulnerable and somewhat desperate possibly to try to lower the bill at that point in time and also they're often going through basically advertising companies so oftentimes you might have the advertising companies that are actually targeting the ads towards these groups of individuals who aren't the actual firms right and then they might be then uh, giving the leads their lead sources that are then going to the actual different uh, firms and so one that could be costly because the advertisement is going to be costly the the prices they charge uh, might be high and you don't know who the in-person that you're going to be working with is in that system. So what you would like to do generally is basically do your own research first. First, go to the IRS website, look at your own circumstances. Uh, and then there's a lot of information on the offer and compromise. The other thing that people often get into tax problems with is like they're a sole proprietor and they get a bunch of 1099s and they just don't file their tax returns. And because they don't file the tax returns, the IRS only knows about their income. They don't know about the expenses that they have had. So they get a tax bill that's way out of proportion because they get taxed on the income rather than the expenses. So you, in that case, you might actually have to tell the IRS, hey, look, I had expenses <laughs> here. And, and then, so that's another kind of the two common things that can get the tax bill out of control. And then the other tool is this offer and compromise. And then if you do talk to someone for help from there, you'd like to go to someone that uh, you know the actual firm directly with the firm rather than going through an advertisement lead generation thing because then you don't know where you're going and you're probably going to have higher costs than you otherwise would because those advertising companies take a big chunk out of the out of it so in any case quote no one can get a better deal for taxpayers than they can usually get for themselves by working directly with the irs to resolve their tax issues end quote said irs commissioner chuck reddick now i'm not totally certain on that personally actually i mean if you had a representative that that knew what they were doing in the areas of offer and compromise and, and lowering debt that have people that have large debts then that could be good the problem is if you're dealing with something that is a mill that then they're going to have absorbent costs to do that so that would mean in my perspective you would certainly want to do your own research in terms of the offer and compromise and whether or not you've reported your taxes or not, look at your options yourself, and then make sure that when you're looking into someone, if you're looking for help with that, that you're doing your research on it. Quote, 
Taxpayers can check online for their best deal, as well as calling a specialized collection line where they can get fast service by using voice and chat bots or opting to speak with a live phone assister, end quote. So offer and compromise. So here's the major tool that these kind of, I guess the mills are, are kind of alluding to. So the offer and compromise mills make outlandish claims, usually uh, in local advertising regarding how they can settle a person's tax debt for pennies on the dollar. So the reality usually is that taxpayers pay the OIC mill a fee to get the same deal they could have gotten on their own by working directly with the IRS. So the offer and compromise itself I mean, it's kind of complicated, but it's all there. So you do, you, you can look at everything on the offer and compromise. The problem is the offer and compromise is only going to be applicable for certain kind of situations. So oftentimes, if you go into like what they're saying, a mill kind of situation, they'll check out to see if you would get the offer and compromise. If you don't qualify for the offer and compromise, then you might end up with just basically a payment plan, which, which you, you know, if that's, if that's the end result, you could easily set up a payment plan uh, yourself possibly so and what would qualify for an offer and compromise usually if your tax debt is below I mean if, if you don't have the capacity to pay the tax debt and you can see this would be similar to any kind of lender borrower kind of situation the IRS is basically saying you owe us money due to the taxes if you're saying I don't have any money I don't have the money to pay it and it's unlikely that I'm gonna get the money in the future, it would be beneficial for both sides of that transaction to try to come to an agreement where you could pay uh, the money. So that's that's when the offer and compromise might come into play. And that would mean that what would you have to do? Well, you would think you'd have to give the IRS basically financial statements and tell them where you stand now, your balance sheet, what kind of assets and liabilities you have and your income threshold and your potential income thresholds in the future. So if you have, a tax debt, for example, and you're driving around in a hundred thousand dollar car and living in a you know million dollar house or something like that, and saying you can't pay the fifteen thousand dollar tax bill, that's probably not going to work for the offer and compromise because they're going to say, right there, you know, they, they're going to have to say that you can't pay the bill. So that's kind of the gist of the offer and compromise. <clears throat> So the IRS has compiled the uh, annual dirty dozen list for more than 20 years as a way of altering taxpayers, alerting taxpayers and tax professional community about scams and schemes. The list is not a legal document or a literal listing of agency enforcement priorities. It is designed to raise awareness among a variety of audiences that may not always be aware of developments involving tax administration. OIC mills, offer and compromise mills, are a problem all year long but tend to be be more visible right after the filing season is over and taxpayers are trying to resolve their tax issues perhaps after receiving a balance due notice in the mail so clearly the thing that helps you know a lot of basically tax professionals in general and clearly the irs mills is the enforcement mechanism of the irs because the fact that the irs is intimidating and, the, and when you get a tax bill saying you owe us a bunch of money we want you to respond in a certain time frame People panic at that point, which is kind of the point of the IRS's letter. And and then you might look for assistance on that uh, if you think that the uh, the the mills or, or a tax professional can basically lower uh, lower the amount. What you'd like to do is go to a you know a, a legit a, a CPA firm possibly and and talk to them about it. But the problem there is a lot of times uh, tax professionals don't really specialize in the offer and compromise process a lot of times. So it is kind of a specialty uh, type of area, but they can they could probably give you at least some, you know, some guidance on that. But in any case, uh, for those who feel they need help, there are many uh, reputable tax professionals available and there are important tools that can help people find the right practitioner for their needs. So obviously if you talk to your, your tax preparer, that would be the place to go if you have one. A lot of people are doing taxes uh, online possibly or with the with uh, other kind of resources but you know talking to a, a, a CPA firm or something like that might be a good place to at least get some idea and and maybe a better kind of reference tool to find uh, the right person to handle the right problem so irs.gov is a good place to start scoping out what to do these quote mills end quote uh, contort the IRS program into something it's not misleading people with a uh, <clears throat> chance of meeting the requirements while charging excessive fees, often thousands of dollars. So that's, of course, the problem. 
because the mills are, are you know, charging a, a big fee to go through the filing process for the offer and compromise, which again, if you really look at the offer and compromise, it's fairly, they're getting quite good on the IRS at kind of laying out the requirements for the offer and compromise. So it's, it's pretty much right there. Although again, it's still kind of confusing for a lot of people, but you can do your research on the IRS website. An offer or OIC is an agreement between the taxpayer and the IRS that resolves the taxpayer's tax debt. The IRS has the authority to settle or uh, compromise federal tax liabilities by accepting less than full payment under certain circumstances. So that's where the offer and compromise is kind of le a legitimate thing, right? Because that means they're going to they're going to settle the tax debt for something other than what the tax debt was. But there has to be specific circumstances on why they would do that. And usually those circumstances are those that both parties, IRS and the taxpayer benefit. Why? Because the taxpayer can't pay the debt like they're not likely to be able to pay them. And that's generally the, the idea. So, however, some promoters are inappropriately advertising uh, indebted taxpayers to file an OIC application with the IRS, even though the promoters know the persons won't qualify. So this is where the kind of scammy stuff comes in because if someone, you should be able to find out fairly quickly whether or not the offer and compromise is likely to have any kind of chance of going through. So again, if, 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 if your income is fairly good, if you're a young person, you have a lot of income potential in the future and you're driving and you have assets and so on that are significant, even if you have a significant tax bill, not likely the offer and compromise is gonna go through because again, it's usually there because the IRS has determined that you're not gonna be able to pay the tax bill and you can get to that assessment, you would think with a pretty, you know, pretty quick uh, assessment. So obviously if they're pulling people in, dangling the offer and compromise, filing the paperwork for the offer and compromise when they know that you're not gonna qualify for the offer and compromise from a fairly short discussion, then you know that's not good that's that's uh that's nefarious kind of scammy stuff so this costs honest taxpayers money and time before taxpayers start investing time to do the paperwork necessary to submit the offer they'll want to check out the irs's official uh, offer and compromise pre uh, qualifier tool so there's a link to that tool here to make sure they're eligible to file one note even though individuals and businesses can submit an offer, the tool is uh, currently only available to individuals. The IRS also created an OIC offer and compromise video playlist that leads taxpayers through a series of steps and forms to help them calculate an appropriate offer based on their assets, income, expenses, and future earning potential. Uh, find these helpful, easy to navigate videos on irs.gov forward slash OIC. The IRS reminds taxpayers that under the first time penalty abatement policy, taxpayers can go directly to the IRS for administrative relief from a penalty that would otherwise be added to their tax debt. So you might be able to abate because of the first time abatement uh, penalty uh, uh, a, a tax bill that you that you would otherwise pay. So OIC mills are one example of unscrupulous tax preparers. Taxpayers should be wary of unscrupulous quote ghost end quote preparers and aggressive uh, prom promises of manufacturing a bigger refund. <clears throat> so anytime you're talking to a tax professional and they're saying, I'm going to I'm going to get you this huge refund or something like that. Uh, that's usually not good because you can because the, the whole idea of the taxes isn't really to get a, a huge refund is to pay as little as taxes as possible. And if you do the good planning involved, then you're going to have less money that you're going to pay throughout the year uh, and kind of thing. But in any case, ghost preparers, although most tax preparers are ethical and trustworthy, taxpayers should be wary of preparers who won't sign the tax returns they prepare often referred to as ghost preparers for e-file returns the quote ghost end quote uh, will prepare the return but refuse to digitally sign as the paid preparer so that doesn't look like a good sign if you're paying the person for the preparer and they're not willing to sign their own return that might mean that they're going to be disappearing next year when the irs possibly audits the return and says the whole thing is messed up and your refund's ridiculous 
and what were you thinking kind of thing and that's what you want to avoid so by law anyone who is paid to prepare or assist in preparing federal tax returns must have a valid preparer tax identification number no one has a p10 paid preparers must sign and include their p10 on the return inflated refunds not signing a return is a red flag that the paid preparer may be looking to make a quick profit by promising a big refund or charging fees based on the size of the refund so this is the difference between like a scammer and a legitimate business. A legitimate business is typically here to stay. They're typically proud to sign their returns. They want to sign the returns, build the reputation and be in a solid area for, for a good time uh, and, a rep and be reputable, right? A, a scam is the person that goes from town to town. And if they're, if they're basically saying they're going to have a huge refund and they do scrupulous things to get a huge refund, and then they charge you a portion of that huge refund don't be surprised if that tax preparer isn't there when you get the tax letter from the irs saying hey some of the stuff you put on here looks not correct could you give us some more verification you're going to say where's my tax preparer well he's in the other town now scamming somewhere else because that's the that's the difference between scams and a business so unscrupulous tax return preparers may also require payment payments in cash only and will not provide a receipt invent income to qualify their clients for tax credits that's going to be going up these days because these tax credits there's refundable credits like earned income tax credits are are becoming significant quite significant right claim fake de deductions to boost the size of the refund direct refunds into their bank account not to the taxpayer's account now if they tell you yeah yeah i'm just gonna get you to refund into my account it's like wait a second <laughs> what that doesn't seem so choose wisely wisely the choosing uh choosing a tax professional page there's a link to that it's on irs.gov irs.gov has information about tax preparer credentials and qualifications the irs directory of federal tax return preparers there's a link to that here with credentials and selected qualifications can help identify many preparers by type of or credential qualification taxpayers are legally responsible for what's on their tax return even if it is prepared by someone else